Hi there, my name is Johnny Miller. I'm a course developer and tutor at Point Blank Online Music School. Uh, I also run a label called Sonar Pilot Audio and have done productions and remixes over the years for various labels including Wawa 45, Soul Candy Recordings and uh, Eye for Eye. And uh, today I'm here to just give you a little tutorial on Ableton Live, which is my speciality at the school. You can get loads of free content from the school's website at pointblankonline.net. Just go to the free courses section there. And uh, But yeah, today I'm going to give you a little tutorial on Ableton uh, and show you how to fashion one of these. This is a, a little custom built dub siren um, that I had made a few years ago. And I take this out with me DJing sometimes, just plug it into the DJ mixer and it allows me to throw little sound system effects um, over the top of the music. It's great fun to have, and um, I'm going to show you how to set up something similar to this in Ableton Live. Anyway, just to explain, this is just a basic synthesizer in a, a little tin box, handmade, of course. And um, if I just switch it on, we've got a couple of basic controls. We've got a select control that gives us access to different types of sounds, and then a pitch control, which controls the pitch. So if I switch it on, change the pitch, change the sound just great fun to have and uh, yeah I'm going to show you how to set up something that sounds similar to this using Ableton Live's analog synth here we are in session view I've got the default analog ready to go loaded from uh, Ableton's devices browser. And the very first thing I'm gonna do is click on the amp one section and just make sure that when I press a keyboard note, I get a nice sharp note. Um, at the moment, if I press the note down, we've got a long tail on that note. So I need to bring the release right in, but also the sustain value right up. So when I press a note on the keyboard, be it long or short, I get an instant start, instant stop on that note. And that's how a dub siren would behave. We don't want any kind of release or tail on that note at all. Okay, next up, I'm gonna to go to LFO1 and switch that on. Now this is where we'll control the speed of our dub siren effect using the LFO rate. I'm quickly gonna turn on the re-trigger function. This means that when I press a separate note, um, I, if I press multiple notes, the LFO starts from the same position each time. So we get the same effect with each note. Um, the LFO doesn't carry on. And again, this is just to give us the same type of effect that we would get on a, on a hardware siren. Now I'm gonna to go to oscillator one. And uh, here's a few things we can do. Firstly, we can change the wave shape for the oscillator. If I switch to square wave, we get a slightly more abrasive tone. And it's also in this section where we're gonna send the LFO to pitch modulation. So here, here's the pitch modulation values. And I'm just gonna turn up LFO1 to about 20. And straight away we can start to hear now the classic dub siren effect with the LFO affecting pitch. Now if I take that value higher than 20, so that's 0 0.20. If I go up to kind of 80, the pitch modulation range is much wider and it sounds kind of crazy. For a more traditional sound, something that sounds a little bit more like a hardware siren, stay around the point zero, uh, 0 0.20 mark. And you get a nice even uh, dub siren effect. Now the LFO rate now, if I just go over to the LFO section, I can now work this to get a faster. or slower siren effect. We can change the start point of the LFO by working the offset value here in degrees. This tends to kind of soften the impact of the siren effect. And you can just work that to taste. I'm gonna set this up at, again at about 20. So we get a slight bend at the beginning of each note too. That sounds quite nice. Just going back to oscillator one, last thing I need to do here is just take the pitch mod key value and turn that down. Because right now if I play different notes on the keyboard, 
I get different pitches. Now we don't really want to control pitch like that. We're going to control pitch using this semitone value here up on oscillator one. So I'm going to turn that key value right down. That means that each note I play on the keyboard, the pitch doesn't change. So I'm going to play a few different notes on the keyboard now. And they're all just playing the same notes. I've turned that key value right down to zero. Back in the LFO section, one other option we have here is to change the LFO wave shape. At the moment we're on the sine wave. Get that nice even flowing siren effect. If I change that to rect or rectangle. Get more of a kind of police siren. So this is one of the ways that you can adjust and change the feel of the dub siren. Uh, changing the LFO wave shape. Okay, now I'm going to start adding some effects to this. And then lastly, I'm going to start working the main controls of this siren, including the pitch, which I talked about earlier. I'm going to set them up on macro controls so we can control all the different functions of the siren in one place. The first effect I'm going to add to this is overdrive. And this is going to give us a little bit of grit, a little bit of extra noise. I'm going to turn the drive value right up and then use this filter to give the siren a little bit more of a kind of lo-fi quality. If I turn the overdrive off, it all sounds quite clean and, and digital. With the overdrive on, it adds the extra sense of war uh, extra sense of warmth. So again, with the overdrive off, it's really clean. Overdrive on, it sounds more like a, a machine. Next up, I'm going to add just a ping pong delay. I'm going to bring the wet drive value right down, so the effect is quite subtle. Also, the feedback as well. I'm going to bring that right down too. So we just get a little subtle delay after the main siren sound. We don't really want to be swimming in delays here. You could even use the filter at this point as well. Just filter up. So we just add a delay to the top end. A few different things we could do here. Working with these filters to give our siren a bit of individual color and character. Lastly, I'm going to place these devices into an instrument rack and use the rack's macro controls to control the sirens, different effects, different parameters in one place. To do that, I'm just going to highlight the analog device and then hold down shift on my keyboard and highlight the ping pong delay. That highlights everything in the chain. So the analog, the overdrive and the ping pong delay. Now I just right click on the analog device and select group. That places all those devices into a single instrument rack. If I open up the macro control section of this instrument rack, I can now take any one of these parameters on analog or the effects devices and I can assign them, I can map them to one of these eight macro controls here on the left. It just means that all my controls are next to each other in one place. I don't need to go and find the different sections of the synth to determine what the siren does. Very, very useful, especially if we then further map these macro controls to a hardware MIDI controller. So to do this, I'm just going to hit map mode and uh, anything green now in the chain, I can assign to one of those eight macros. So I'm going to select LFO rate, just click on it once and just click on the mapping button for macro one. And that's going to assign the LFO rate speed. Uh, to macro one. I'm also going to put the uh, LFO wave onto macro two. That's the shape. Uh, I'm going to assign the octave control for the oscillator. That's the, the wider pitch range to macro three and then semitone pitch range um, to macro four. Now each pot has a minimum and maximum value. And just in this section above here, the mapping section, I can set those minimum and maximum values according to how I want them to be. And you can experiment with this quite a lot. I'm going to set the octave value um, to minus one to uh, plus two. That's going to give me a little bit of a deeper pitch if I want and uh, enable me to go up a couple of octaves too and get a sort of higher pitch siren sound. Um, I'm going to leave the 
semitone value. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to. I was going to leave it on its own. I'm going to leave that at zero to twelve, so I can pitch up. And that just means that if I bring the pot right to the bottom, I know I'm on zero. Uh, the LFO speed. I'm going to take this up a little bit because zero point one is very very slow. I'm going to take that up to uh, one hertz and down the maximum value to about eight and a half, that'll do. That means that the LFO speed will be fairly slow to quite quick, and it won't slow all the way down to, to nothing, can go too fast where we can't really hear any modulation. Now the LFO wave shape, we can't actually set any minimum maximums here. But if I come out of map mode and just change the pot, let's just click on LFO rate, there we go. Um, if I change the LFO shape, you can see it changing on analog. It's just working between the different wave shapes that we've got in that menu. And uh, in this case, we go from sine wave through tri wave to the rectangle wave we used before. And then we've got a couple of noise waves as well, which are kind of random waves. That gives you some quite interesting effects. So let's just play a few notes now. I'm going to bring the LFO speed up. Let's change the LFO shape. Let's bring, bring the octave value up so we get a little bit of higher pitch. So there, just as I'm holding down the note, I can just move these different parameters around to get different types of siren effects. Let's do some shorter notes. So lots and lots of different flavors and characters we can get out of this siren just by working those different macro controls now. And there's our dub siren ready to go, ready to save into our library if we wanted to as well. And uh, you're going to have loads and loads of fun with that. Um, I'm going to be back again soon to give you some more little tips with Ableton Live. And uh, you can check out uh, all the free content on the school's website, pointblankonline.net. Okay, I'll be back again soon. Peace.